what's in my toolbox and are these tools accessible to everyone <clears throat> well I can only assume that I have exactly the same tools as everyone else has um, I generally act on that assumption so I would have the same tools as other people um, and, and other people would have access to the same tools to ascertain reality or to, to delve deeper into it. Um, my original turn of phrase was we would have to back up a bit. Remember that. It's, uh, you said it's delving deeper? Yeah, maybe. That's could put it that way too. But I would say you have to back up. For example, we're talking about depressive realism and the whole sort of formula seems to be based upon the idea of either an absolute reality or some sort of fixed point by which, even if we can't access it, it does exist, to measure the quality of existence. The value. Is, is existence good or bad? I understand that um, Wiki will tell you that that's not depressive realism, but I find some DRs are arguing it that way. Um, but <clears throat> I, I'm interested in the idea, and this goes back to my toolbox thingy, um, in the base definition, or the base assumption, is that depressed people have a more accurate view of themselves than non-depressed people, or a more, I don't know, realistic view of themselves. Again, you use realistic, well, that assumes that there is a, a reality out there that we can measure everything's accuracy by, but anyway... They say, okay, well, let's let's look at it this way. If two people out of three believe that they're happier or more positive than um, than average, then a fair chunk of those people have to be wrong. It's just not possible for that to be the case. My toolbox has that tool in it, the tool of mutual exclusivity. In other words, it's impossible for the majority of the human race to be more intelligent or more uh, well-adjusted um, than average. Because <clears throat> the majority means that it's in the, you know, its placement in the entirety of things means that it's more than the average in terms of a sample. So you can't have 75% of the people believing that they're in the top 50%. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't work. Um, that's a tool. That kind of logic is a tool. Some people treat that tool as though it's a master, as though that's a solid wall that I bump into when I try to examine reality. Things like that. They're... I think eons ago, I tried to debate uh, Stefan Molyneux on this issue, but he called it self-detonating questions. Um, the, you know, 75% of the population is above average in intelligence. Let's say that. That that was, I guess, would be his example of a self-detonating question that just, boom, doesn't work. Well, that's a tool, and the tool has just struck down this idea that I've put forward. You can't have that. Well, I'm going to look at that tool, and I'm going to say, why not? And most people would say, what do you mean, why not? Didn't you learn basic arithmetic here? 75%, that means there's only 25% left of a hole here. So you can't have 75% above average intelligence. Because that means that <laughs> there's 25% that simply don't fit into the the, the top 75% of the pie chart, which is above average. <laughs> you, you can't do that. Says who? Says somebody who says that there's only one way to quantify intelligence. Um, I'm the one who decides what intelligence is in terms of my value set. Nobody else decides how intelligent I am. My next-door neighbor lives just over there behind the camera, or he lived over there just behind the camera. He was one of these people who sat out on his back porch 
observing the neighbors and thinking what a bunch of dolts we all are. I think I was his favorite because of my eccentric habits. Uh, least favorite. And I'm sure he thought I was the biggest idiot going. And by his reckoning, I am. Because I completely waste my life. I don't do things that are important to him, like playing hockey or um, going to hockey games or uh, going to football games or going out to sports nights at the bar and all that stuff that the typical Canadian suburbanite finds so important. None of that interests me in the least. To him, I'm an idiot. It's very simple, because I'm wasting my life. Um, in other words, I'm stupid. You, know, you understand that. He thinks that I'm stupid. Um, because I chase valueless things. Well, um, he smoked himself to death. He smoked hand-rolled cigarettes and died of cancer about two years ago, three years ago. To him, smoking wasn't a stupid thing to do. Okay, I, I get that. That's the, the cigarette thing is an interesting, convoluted discussion in and of itself. Look, I know darn well that these things are no good for me, so but I'm smoking them because I like them. All right, that's fine. That's that's cool. As long as you're not you know, placing value on the fact that you're doing that, I'm not going to interfere with your rights. Um, but you can't sit there and puff on a cigarette and tell other people what they're doing is stupid. <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's stupidity is, it manifests itself in a great many ways, and so does intelligence. Um, so there is no self-destruct there. You're not, you don't have the immovable force meeting the, uns or the immovable object meeting the unstoppable force here. If I say 75% of the population are above average intelligence, I'm not going to bow down to that god of dialectic that we've created to serve us, to help us make sense of the universe. Logic isn't our, our master. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to be a slave of it. I'm not just going to stop thinking along lines because logic goes, stop, can't go any further with this. Because that's what, it, that's what essentially you're doing. If you say that, oh, 75% uh, of the population can't be above average in intelligence or in happiness or in good looks or whatever, because we're saying there is one standard. Um, what I'm saying is, even in the provisionally real, there is no one standard for all this stuff. There's certainly no one standard for what constitutes the value of the universe. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I will even go after the basic premise of depressive realism. Um, that it's not that depressive people are seeing reality accurately. They may not be, and that might not even, as you say, be on the table. But uh, let's look at it this way. Do they have a more accurate assessment of themselves and reality than non-depressed people? Um, okay, why would you say that? Well, because two people out of three believe they're above average in happiness. That's not possible. Yes, it is possible. Unless, of course, you've turned your tools into gods. <laughs>